Laura Moore. In association with KCBS TV, presents exclusive coverage of 1985 University of Southern California football. USC football is sponsored in part by Budweiser, the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. From the Coliseum in Los Angeles, it's time for exciting college football 1985 as the USC Trojans get ready to do battle with Baylor University. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jeff Witcher here at the Coliseum, USC against Baylor. The Trojans 1-0 on the Young campaign, while Baylor is 1-1, but just as easily could be 2-0. Last weekend, they lost a tough one against Georgia, 17-14. My broadcasting partner is here with me, Jim Perry, and one of the highlights of USC's victory two weeks ago against Illinois, the outstanding performance by their defense. USC's defense played a very, very fine game in Illinois, Jeff. They forced six turnovers and held Illinois to just 10 yards rushing. In fact, those turnovers set up all 20 Trojan points. One of them, the first one of the game, happened in about five minutes into the game when cornerback Matt Johnson picked off a pass and ran it back to about the 15-yard line and set up USC's first touchdown. Another one shortly after, uh, Luke Brock picked off a pass. In fact, that secondary got four interceptions, including two by Junior Thurman. So the secondary played well, the up front men played very well, and all in all, a fine effort for the Trojan defense. Of course, the defense is not all inexperienced because the Trojans have two of the finest safeties in the country, and number one, Jerome Tyler, and number six, Tim McDonald. They're outstanding. Yes, they are. McDonald, you know, was a preseason All-American, even though he's just a junior. He's a big, rangy kid at 6'3", and a potential first-round draft choice of the future. And Tyler's kind of the old man of the secondary. He's a senior. He led the secondary minutes play last year. Both are very uh, experienced, and as you said, perhaps the best pair on any college team in the country. Of course, the USC defense will be tested again this evening because Baylor runs a split-back veer, a triple-option type offense, and they have two quarterbacks who split duty about 50% of the time. One of them is number 14, Cody Carlson. What can you tell us about Cody? Cody is a junior, and he's the taller of the two quarterbacks. He's 6'3", and like Tom Mickey, the other one, he likes to run that option uh, very well. He does a very good job of it. And he also throws very well. Mickey's about a 50% passer and threw two touchdown passes against Wyoming in the opener. Of course, now Tom Mickey, number 10, is the other quarterback. Uh, what is his strength? Mickey uh, is uh, perhaps a little better runner than Carlson. Is he shorter? Carlson is 6'3", Mickey is 10, uh, six, 6 feet even. He's had a touchdown pass in each game, and his passing percentage is a little higher, 57% to 50%. This is the third meeting between the two schools. They split the previous two games way back in 1959 when SC defeated Baylor 17-8. Then in 1960 at Waco, they returned the favor, knocking off the Trojans 35-14. We're delighted you're aboard. Get comfortable. We'll have the opening kickoff right after this. <laughs> The USC Trojans have won the flip of the coin and elected to receive, and they'll be defending the eastern goal to our right. The Baylor Bears kicking off and defending the western goal to our left here at the Coliseum. Steve Webster, one of the deep men for USC. And the other deep man for the Trojans, Randy Tanner. Tanner scored a touchdown against Illinois, Jeff, on a 47-yard pass from Sean Salisbury. Also caught a 48-yard bomb. And Webster, though, is probably the best kickoff returner on the team. He's a redshirt freshman with outstanding speed. Had a great spring and a great early fall. Jim Mueller, number 32, set the kickoff for Baylor. He does it barefooted. Out. And over end kick. Deep. We're underway. So Tanner puts a knee down, and it's a touchback. So 
USC will start off the ball game with the football, first and ten on their 20. Offensively, Sean Salisbury, the fifth-year senior at quarterback. Kennedy Pola at fullback. Crutcher at tailback. Randy Tanner at flanker. Hank Norman, the split end. Eric McKee at tight end. Fitzpatrick, Briegel, Cox, Halleck, and Cadigan, the fine offensive line of the UFC Trojans. Tanner wide to the right. Norman wide to the left. One remaining back. That's Crutcher. And Paul Green goes in motion for our side. Crutcher gets the first call and picks up a couple of yards before he is brought down by Derek Turner. You'll hear that name a lot. And Alan Jamison. They have a pretty good defense at Baylor. Marsh, Crumbine, Trey Crouch, and Derek Turner, the front four. Rayberry, Allen, Jamison, Aaron Grant, the linebackers, and the secondary, Francis Coleman, Jack Hurd, and Thomas Everett. Number 27, the free safety Everett. We'll hear a lot from him. He was a good one. Second down and eight for USC. Salisbury to throw. He finds Tanner right up at the 35-yard line. He's down to the 39. Will really turned into a fine football player and a fine receiver. And Sean Salisbury picking up right where he left off against Illinois. He was 10 for 15 against the Illini. You see him hitting Tanner, the flanker, who's wide open there. Tanner turns quickly to get another three or four yards out of the play. First down on the Trojans, 39. 17 yards for Tanner. First and 10. USC at their own 39 yard line. Crutcher trying to get outside, but he is unable to as Robert Waters comes in and puts him down at the 35-yard line. Waters, a junior, six feet tall, 219 pounds out of Fort Worth. Crutcher takes the pitch and goes to the right side. Waters is listed as a second-team linebacker, but he started the game, actually. Here you see him throw Crutcher for a four-yard loss in the backfield. And critical to the, for the Trojans is how long Crutcher can play, Jeff, because those painful calcium deposits in his shoulder are still bothering him. Second down and 11 for USC. Plenty of time. He throws it to Pola. He can't hold on. So incomplete at the 41 yard line. Robert Waters covering on the play. Two good plays in a row by Waters. He's now coming out of the lineup. Third down for the Trojans. Salisbury, I think, wanted to throw over the middle. You see him scrambling now as he throws to Pola out in the flat. And the ball was a little bit behind him. Nick Norman and Tanner right to the left side. Crutcher the long running back. He gets the call. And he's brought down by Alan Jamison at the 40-yard line. Jamison, 6'1", 228. He's a senior, the middle linebacker out of Houston. And he puts the stop on Crutcher and the USC drive early in this ball game with 13.02 clock running here in the first quarter. So Chris Spurl, the young punter for USC, will stand back at his own 25-yard line. And snapping the ball for the first time in his college career is center Scott Brennan. And Sam Arnold, the Thomas Everett, the lone deep man, takes it at his own 21. He can go. He's across the 30, brought down at the 32-yard line by USC's Tracy Butts. Fine play by Butts. So it'll be first and 10 for Baylor and their own 32-yard line early in the first quarter, 12-36 remaining, no score. That was a 39-yard punt, 11-yard return. He started the game, Jeff, uh, for Baylor at quarterback, as he did last week against Georgia. We'll see Tom Mickey for perhaps a couple of series, and then we'll see Cody Carlson for perhaps a couple more as Baylor alternates their quarterbacks. Mickey, McAdoo, Williams, Pruitt, Clark, and Warrens, the offensive backs and receivers, and the line, Porter, Lane, Addicts, Bates, and Cochran. Pickup of two on that first carry, second down and eight on the option. The pitch goes to Garrett McAdoo, and he gets up to the 39-yard line before Garrett Breland brings him down. Breland starting at one of the outside linebacker spots, a senior out of Fullerton, 6'1", 230. The defensive line for USC up front, Matt Court, Tony Cotterito, and Brent Moore. 
Marcus Cut, Garrett Freeland, Keith Davis, Mike Service starting for Bono in the defensive backs. And in the secondary, Johnson, Brock, and Tyler with McDonald. Third down and two for Baylor. Nearly 40 yards. It was an excellent pass by Tom Mickey, but a fine defensive play by Trojan safety Jerome Tyler, who we talked about in the pregame show. He hit Clark very hard and forced him to cough up that ball before it was a completed pass. And we have a penalty. Penalty flag. Illegal motion the call against Baylor. The Trojans, of course, will decline, I would think. They'll get the ball on fourth down on a punt. So Sam Otto, we mentioned his injury. He's quite a loss. Not only is he a fine football player, he called the defensive signals and that sure goes to number 60 Keith Davis and you see Davis talking with the referee. I don't only calls the defensive signals uh, last week uh, or two weeks ago against Illinois he led the Trojans in tackles with 14. So the penalty takes the ball back to the 34 and a half yard line of Baylor. It will be third down and seven for Baylor. Glenn Fuller, wide left. Mickey throws, and it's incomplete near midfield. A great job by Keith Davis and Jerome Tyler. It was intended for Robert Williams, one of the offensive backs coming out of the backfield, but he was closely covered, as you mentioned, Jeff. So that brings in last season's Southwest Conference Runner of the Year, Buzzy Sawyer, and Al Washington, the lone deep man for USC. Washington takes a ball that's 22. To the 30, and he's up to the 32-yard line before he is brought down. By 42 yard punt, four yard return. The officials for the ball game Larry Thompson, the referee, Bill Anger, the umpire, Neil Newhouse, the headlinesman, Baker, Sifferman, Dale, and Irwin, line, field, side, and back judges. No score, first quarter, 11 09 remaining. Sean Salisbury has Norman wide to the left, Tanner wide to the right. Eric McKee, the tight end for the Jordans, came across the field right to left. You saw him cut across your screen there, and Salisbury threw a nice pass to hit him for a seven-yard gain. And that is McKee's first catch of the young season. McKee out of Carson. He's 6'4", 240 pounds. He's a junior. on both the offensive line and the defensive line. The question is, who moved first? Sam! Yeah. Looks like it'll be marched off against USC illegal yeah. procedure. James Fitzpatrick, the culprit. There's the mascot of Baylor University. Now you know why they're called the Bears. I want to remind you that this program has been recorded and edited for broadcast at this time. Salisbury statistics for 1984. Second down and seven for USC. Green in motion to the far side. Fletcher. Nice job by the muscles as well. And across the 40 up to the 42 yard line before Ray Berry and Alan Jamison combine on the tackle. Barry is a good one out of Abilene, Texas, 6'2", 227. He's a junior. We see Kennedy Pola, number 37, leading the way for Fred Crutcher, who got seven yards on the play. Crutcher, the all pac 10 tailback last season. Going to bring the chains out to mark the ball. Well, they've got a good yard, a long yard, third and a long one. Four down, one yard to go. 
Crutcher. Nine yards on four carries. And as Jim Perry mentioned from the outset, Crutcher playing with great pain in that left shoulder with more calcium deposits. He is a tough cookie, but he has been playing and practicing in pain. Kevin Marsh led the charge along with Steve Crumbine. Marsh out of San Antonio, 235, six feet tall, a junior. Take another look. Trojans tried to cross up Baylor by running the fullback using the tailback. He gets it in short yardage situations like that. The opponent was met by Marsh right in the line. He fought off the hard, but I think he's short, and he is. No, he got the first down. First down for its first and ten, USC on their own 43 yard line. Norman Turner robbing the left, holding the pressure to the main back. Play after, rolling left, it's South Carolina. And he completes the pass at the 38 yard line to Ann Norman. Nice catch by Norman before he was forced out of bounds by free safety Thomas Everett. Salisbury faked the handoff to the right side to Freddie Crutcher and then rolled to his left. Baylor fooled a little bit by that play and then he threw to Norman. And this is the 24th straight game that Norman has caught a pass. Big first down play for USC. Actually, it's the 25th. The Illinois game was the 24th, so he now has 25 straight games. He gets it at least one pass. First and 10, USC. Deep in Baylor territory. Crutcher. And he cuts inside and he gets down to the 45 yard line. Robert Water. Brought him down to the Coliseum turn. Robert Waters really puts a hit on the red pressure, too, as you'll see here. Knocked him sideways, but he knocked him forward a little bit, too, to get three yards. Shawsbury has Norman wide to the left. Green comes in motion to the near side. Crutcher again gets the call. And Thomas Everett from that free safety position again makes the tackle. Everett hits like a much bigger man. He's 5'8", 177. Good block here by number 17, Paul Green. There you see on Robert Waters, number 44. Crutcher went through that by that block for the five yards. Chris Baylor plays a lot of their games in the Southwest Conference on artificial surface. They're on grass tonight. Rolls right, and he fires to Norman, complete at the 18-yard line. USC is using the rollout pass uh, a lot more this year than they have in the recent pass. Salisbury rolled left to complete a pass to Norman a moment ago. Here he rolls right and hits Hank again for another first down. Right in front of Thomas Everett. So Norman now, 28 catches to pass the top-rated Jeff Simmons. He's the all-time top receiver, Salisbury, for a five, 57 yards. USC's ball on the 17, first and 10. Oh. And Kennedy Paula is down to the 12-yard line of the Baylor. Brought down by Thomas Everett. Kennedy Pola, the 6'1", 240-pound senior fullback. He'll get a breather now as he leaves and goes to the sideline. This is a good-looking drive for USC. The Trojans have mixed the ball up well with passes. They've run the fullback. They've run the tailback. This is their eighth play on the ground. Right here on the second and five. Five shots there. by Coach Ed Turner. As Coach said, he's throwing better than ever. Todd Steele, the fullback, gets the call. And he doesn't get too much yardage. Brought down by Eugene Hall. Like where they're spotting that ball, Jeff. He got about a foot. So a big third down play. Six minutes and 35 seconds left. First quarter, third and four for USC. Thomas Everett helped out by Ray Perry on the play. 
Chargers had the Chargers actually had three tight ends in the game. They had Eric McKee and Paul Green at either end of the line, and Joe Corbier in the backfield. And Crutcher with good blocking from the Chargers and some hard running by him gets the first down. First and goal for USC on the seven-yard line. brought him down. He's from Edmond, Oklahoma. 6'1", 255, and watch this fine defensive play by Turner. Turner was all Southwest Conference last year. He shows you why as he shoots into the backfield to throw a pressure for a loss. He had 15 tackles for a loss last year, and for Baylor, that the first one this year came in a very opportune time. Three-yard loss. Three seconds left in the first quarter. reception for Norman. And Norman has 42 yards on three receptions. It's 7-0 USC as Don Schaefer getting ready to kick off for the Trojans. We should mention for our viewers, Jeff, that USC will be back in the Coliseum on October 5th, Saturday, October 5th against Oregon State. We kick off at 1.30 and it's homecoming. This year's theme is a tribute to USC volunteers. Festivities start on the USC campus at 10 a.m., followed by the game between the Trojans and the Beavers. For ticket information, call the USC ticket office at 213-743-GO-SC. That's 743-GO-SC for USC Oregon State tickets. Randy Rutledge, 45, Derek Metcalf, 26. The two deep men, four bands. He's brought down by Elbert Watts, a senior out of Carson. So Baylor has a football on their own 26-yard line, first and 10, 5-17 remaining first quarter, and USC leading Baylor 7-0. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jim Perry. Glad you can join us. All-time record in home openers for USC. Very impressive. Tom Mickey at quarterback for Three. Baylor. Gets up to the 30-yard line, brought down by Garrett Breland. Breland, 6'1", 230-pound, a senior. One thing about Baylor, the Bears like to mix up their offense. Last week, uh, early in the game against Georgia, the first two first downs they had, they threw the ball. First two first downs in this game, they've run the ball. In fact, our defensive coordinator, Artie Gigantino of the Trojans, says that the only thing about Baylor that was meant to do again Jeff and I think Tony Colorado just picked him up and said you're not going anywhere but backwards Mark at his forward motion at the 30 yard line <laughs> The Trojan defense held Illinois at just 10 yards on the ground. It's very, very strong against the run, and even without two starters, uh, Sam Otto and Greg 
collapse and because the defense has played well early in the game. Mickey sends Leland to the left side. And he is throwing to Derek McAdoo incomplete at the 38 yard line. Tim McDonald covering for USC. There is a flag down. Got a penalty flag down at the 32 yeah, yard line. Right. So let's see what the call is. Offside, USC. USC was offside on the play. Ron Brown, the culprit. Brown, out of La Puente, California, outside linebacker. Ted Tolmer in his third year at USC. Last year's Pac-10 Coach of the Year as he took the Trojans to the Rose Bowl and beat Ohio State. Big third down play for Baylor. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Third down and two. Handoff goes for Ralph Stockton. He has the first down in Minnesota. And he'll mark the ball at the 41-yard line. In on the tackle, Mike Serpa, inside linebacker. Serpa is just a freshman. He was helped out by senior quarterback Matt Johnson. Johnson, 6'3", 205 pounds out of Shula Vista. Stockermer is a big bruising back. You'll see him get six yards here as he runs by. Uh, Johnson had a shot at him at the backfield, number eight, but he got by him, and he carries Serpa here a yard or two before the rest of the Trojans come in to help out. Seven yard line before he is brought down again by Garrett Breland. Lewis Brock helped out from his cornerback slot. It's tough to work against that option in practice because your own scout team, of course, can't run it with the speed of the offense that you're going to face on Saturday. And USC hasn't seen an option team in some while. And those pitch outs by Mickey on the corner befuddling the Trojans a little bit early in this game. Second down and five for Baylor at row 47. McAdoo. McAdoo brought down by Keith Davis and Marcus Cotton. Davis, a 6'1", 230-pound sophomore, and Cotton, also a sophomore, out of Oakland, California. He stands 6'4", and weighs in at 215 pounds. It's now third down and one from midfield for Baylor. Two minutes and 44, 43 seconds left, first quarter. yardage for the first down first and ten Baylor inside USC territory well, Baylor is doing something that Illinois could not do two weeks ago they're now running on the Trojans and again we mentioned to you that how unpredictable Baylor is against uh, Georgia they threw the ball more times than they ran the ball today they're they've run it every play on the series but one when they threw it and that play doesn't count because the penalty on USC so they run it seven plays the 42 or 43 yard line. Fine carry by McAdoo. Lewis Brock and Garrett Breland combined on the tackle for USC. Leland Douglas on the wide right. Lynn Pruitt. Wide left. McAdoo and Williams are running back. Mickey on the quarterback keeper and he gets to the 40 yard line. I think he did a nice job of faking on that play. He slipped it right into the stomach of Derek McAdoo and took it out. And a couple of the Trojans followed McAdoo as Mickey cut inside for a short game. So Baylor trying to run the ball on USC, and so far they have been successful. SC leading Baylor 7-0. Clock running. 114 left. First quarter. You see Robert Williams number 22 fall off the bear on his shoulder. Mike Serpa, the outstanding freshman, making a, a rare start tonight in place of the injured Sam Otto. In on that stop, he was helped out by Garrett Breeland. They bring the chain gang in to major. Should be very, very close. Might be a little bit short. 
And it is. It is short. Not short by very much, about a foot and a half. Stockerman just needed a yard. He got about 10 yards. There's Matt Johnson taken out of the play. And then you see him carrying Jerome Tyler. We told you he's a big bruising back. He carries Tyler another three or four yards as he gets down to the Trojan 28. First and 10. Baylor at the USC 28 yard line. again in on the tackle along with Garrett Breland and Brent Moore. As I look at my play-by-play -play here, that's the ninth straight play that Baylor has run the ball. And this from a team that going into the game had gained more than twice as many yards passing than running. Because that is the type of coach that Brent Taft is. He likes to change formations almost every week against the various opponents and it works out successfully good crowd on hand here at the coliseum as the first quarter comes to an end with the score usc seven baylor nothing on the 18 yard line to see where it will be second down and ten Williams, a ball carrier. He gets good yardage inside the 15, down to close to the 12-yard line. Mike Serpa, again, hit on the tackle for USC. Last week, uh, Jeff Baylor was throwing on second and two. This week, second and 10, they ran the ball. How can you figure? He's up third and five from the USC 13-yard line. by Mickey avoiding the USC rush. Take another look. Colorado, Cotton, several Trojans were in the backfield. Mickey just sort of ducked under them, got the pass off. There's 58, Marcus Cotton. He just sort of danced around Cotton. Now he's open to throw the pass and complete it for the first down. So they were not going to do it. Here's the goal on the USC six. So six, six yards, a the six touchdown. yard touchdown run. You see him fake the ball inside, and he's, he also fakes the pitch now to 22. Robert Williams fools the Trojans for a moment, just long enough for him to cut inside and score. And that is the 61st game that Baylor has scored in, which is an ongoing school record for the Bears. Now number 19, a uh, walk-on freshman who won the field goal and point after job, Terry Siler. So Siler is 7 for 7 on PATs, and with timeout on the field, 13 27 left until halftime. It's USC 7 and Baylor 7. We'll have more after this. Well, the fans having fun here at the Coliseum. We hope you're enjoying the ball game. It's a 7-7 tie. USC and Baylor. Baylor just scored, so they're set to kick off. Jim Mueller, number 32, will do the booting honors. The two deep men for USC. 
Steve Webster and Randy Tanner. The scoring drive took 6.55, 16 plays. They marched 72 yards, and Mickey took it in from the six-yard line for the score. And all the yardage gained in that drive was on the ground. The only passes thrown were incomplete. It is a gorgeous evening here in the City of the Angels. Tanner takes it in the end zone and he elects to run it up. Spins away from a couple of tacklers and then he is mobbed at the 15 yard line. I believe they'll spot it at the 16. So a 16 yard return and USC will have it first and 10. As Sean Salisbury comes out to run the offense, uh, he is five of six for 67 yards and one touchdown. The pass to Hank Norman. Sean has not thrown an interception yet in this young season. First and 10 on the 16 yard line for USC. Trojans and Baylor tied up at seven each. Todd Steele and Crutcher in the backfield. Crutcher gets the call and he picks up a yard, maybe a little bit more. Aaron Grant in on the stop for Baylor. Eugene Hall, number 93, into the ball game. Second and eight for USC at their own 18-yard line. Norman wide to the left, Tanner wide to the right. Salisbury gets rushed. He flips it to Crutcher, who is down at the 24-yard line. Aaron Grant made the stop. Grant is a junior, six feet tall, 227 pounds, out of Dallas. Salisbury did a good job of scrambling on that play. He faked to Crutcher first, and then he got in trouble as he went back to pass, and Crutcher was sort of the safety valve on the play. He was open up the middle, and Sean hit him for six yards. Now a big third down play for the Trojans. Trojans have been successful three or four times on third down conversion plays. Let's see how they do here. Crutcher trying to get outside, and he does, and he's up to the 30-yard line for a first down for USC. Anthony Coleman, one of the Baylor Bears, in on the tackle. Also in on the stop, Alan Jamison. Todd Steele, the fullback, and James Fitzpatrick, the weak side tackle, were throwing blocks on that side to enable Crutcher to get the first down. He got six yards. So a first and 10 for USC at their own 30-yard line. Norman wide to the left, Tanner wide right. Salisbury to throw, and he's throwing it long. Norman cannot hold on to the football at the Baylor 28-yard line. That would have been a great catch if he could have held on to the ball. Aaron Grant, uh, excuse me, Anthony Coleman was back there covering him, number six. You see the ball thrown on the wrong side of Hank Norman, and he went up in the air, made an acrobatic effort to try and catch it, and came down and couldn't hang on. Hank gave it a great effort, almost was able to hold on, not quite. down and 10 for USC at their own 30-yard line. Joe Cormier in motion. Crutcher with the football. Battles his way for a couple of yards up near the 33-yard line. Robert Waters and Ray Berry combined on the stop. Ray Berry led Baylor in total tackles last year with 107. And out of the 107, 63 were unassisted. So Ray Berry, a very talented, strong linebacker for Baylor. Third down and seven from the 33-yard line. A big third down play for Sean Salisbury on the Trojans. With 11-15 left, first half, 7-7, our score. Salisbury with pretty good protection. Now he gets rushed. And it's almost picked off by Thomas Everett. Everett almost picked it off, and had he done so, he'd have been headed for the races. Thomas Everett is a fine, fine ball player. He's only 5'8", but he plays like he's 6'4", and in the words of Trojan backfield coach Frank Fox, hits like he's 6'4", too. You see him react here to knock the ball up in the air and almost catch it on the rebound. Eric McKee was the intended receiver that tied in for the Trojans. Everett deep for Baylor, and Spurl will boot the ball from about his own 20-yard line. Everett is outstanding, very explosive. 
He takes it at his own 21-yard line. Gets away from one man, but he does not break the second tackle. Elbert Watts brought him down. Outstanding play by Watts to get Everett in a hurry. So, with 10.54 left in the first half, the score, USC 7, Baylor 7. Cody Carlson is now in at quarterback for the Baylor Bears. First and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Handoff goes to the first man through who picks up maybe a yard, if that. You might be wondering what Tom Mickey is thinking on the sideline. He just took his team 72 yards for a touchdown and scored that Baylor touchdown from the six-yard line. Uh, now he's been replaced by Cody Carlson. But Mickey and Carlson have alternated for three years at Baylor, uh, so they're used to it. They're good friends. They're, uh, they came to Baylor the same year, although one of them is a senior, Mickey, and uh, Carlson's a junior. Carlson was Richard. A quick look in pass, and it's complete at the 30-yard line to Horace Eights. Tim McDonald and Jerome Tyler right there on the stop. Grant Taft in his 14th year as head coach of Baylor. A great motivator and his coaching record 115, 117 and 7. He Grant is, Taft. He has twice taken Baylor to the Cotton Bowl with winning Southwest Conference championships and five times he's been named Southwest Conference coach of the year. He's a good one. First and 10 Baylor from their own 30-yard line. Ben Baker in motion to the near side. On the keeper now, the pitch. And it's Broderick Sargent crossing over the 35-yard line. He's up to the 37-and-a-half-yard line. Good gain by Sargent. Brought down by Lewis Brock and Tim McDonald. The fake is inside to Jackie Ball, number two, by Carlson, who pitches to Sargent. You see Lou Brock trying to bring him down, and he does, but not after Sargent gets it about eight yards. Second down and a short three from the 37-yard line. Hand off to Jackie Ball. And he tried to maneuver his way for a yard. Short of the first down, however. Brought down by Brent Moore, helped out by Mike Serpa. 7-7, our score. USC scored in the first quarter, and Baylor scored in the second period. 9 02 left in the first half. And Baylor is doing what USC likes to do keep the ball on the ground and maintain possession. Handoff <laughs> goes to Stockamer and he is stacked up, but I believe he has enough yardage for the first down. <laughs> Keith Davis, Matt Johnson, Marcus Cotton all in on the tackle for USC. First down for Baylor. <laughs> They spot the ball close to the 41-yard line. Baylor has one more first down than USC. We have 8.35 remaining first half. The clock is running. Handoff goes to Broderick Sargent. Battles his way for two to three yards. Brought down by Tony Colorito, the All-American candidate nose guard, and Marcus Cotton. Baylor using the split back veer offense this year. Last year, the Bears ran from the I formation, and Sargent was the starting fullback. Now he's just one of the two running backs in the split back veer. They used to run it up until last year and the year before because they had a man by the name of Alfred Anderson, now with the Minnesota Vikings, and they ran out of the power I because his ability, in Taft's uh, opinion, dictated that. The pitch goes to Sargent. And he is out of bounds at midfield. He's Tim close McDonald to an... and Matt Johnson knocked him out of bounds. I was going to say, Jeff, he's close to another first down. Nice pitch by Carlson. Third quarter score, Fresno State 16, Oregon State 9. Final score, Oregon 45, Stanford 28. So Cody Carlson, who is a junior, 6'3", 193 pounds, at the controls for Baylor as they bring the chains out. And it's a first down for the Baylor Bears. Well, Baylor doing it on the ground again. We told you that on that first drive, all 16 
There were 16 plays, 15 of them run, one pass that was incomplete. This drive, except for one pass, has been all on the ground. Matt Clark is wide to the right side, and Carlson rolls to his right. And he throws, and it's complete to Robert Waters at the USC 39-yard line. Check that. That was Horace Ace. Horace Ace, number 23, the receiver, and Tim McDonald was right on him and knocked him out of bounds. Take another look. You'll see outside linebacker Marcus Cotton almost get Cody Carlson. There is Cotton, but Carlson gets the pass off to Ace for another first down. First and ten for Baylor. Grant Taft talking it over with some of his players. There's H who just made the reception and number 14, Cody Carlson, doing an outstanding job on the current drive, just as his uh, teammate Tom Mickey did when they scored a few minutes ago to tie it up at 7-7. 93 yards to 32 yards rushing. Baylor doing surprisingly well. And the pitch goes to Robert Sargent. And he is tripped up inside the USC 35-yard line at about the 33-and-a-half-yard line of USC. Lewis Brock and Garrett Breland in on the stop for the Trojans. Sargent, 26 yards on five carries. Second down and four from the USC 33-yard line. Glenn Pruitt, Matt Clark, wide to the right side. Jackie Ball, the ball carrier. Picks up a, a yard, maybe a little bit more. Marcus Cotton brought him down. In the first game against Wyoming, a game that Baylor won 39-18, Jackie Ball on only his third college carry went 77 yards for a touchdown. He was about 75 yards short of it on that play. Tim Mickey, number 10, replaces Carlson at quarterback now. Third down and three on the 32-yard line. So the senior, Tom Mickey, who spells that last name, M-U-E-C-K-E, -E, is in there. Ball has plenty for the first down. Make that stock. That is Stockhammer, I beg your pardon. So there are some Baylor fans in Los Angeles, and they're happy with their ball club right now driving very successfully against USC's defense that had such an outstanding game two weeks ago against Illinois. The Trojans were favored by 11 points coming into this game and ranked third in both wire service polls, but they are in a tough, tough fight. Carlson in there, and he keeps the ball. He's up to the 22-yard line of USC. Both Carlson and Mickey are doing a good job of faking. He faked inside to Jackie Ball on that play and froze the Trojan defense for just long enough for him to get outside. You watch him fake to number two. He puts the ball in his stomach, takes it out, keeps it, and he'll get about five yards. Glenn Pruitt into the ball game, replacing Ben Baker for Baylor. Cody Carlson at quarterback. Pruitt goes in motion, Leland wide to the left side. Handoff goes to Sargent, and he is game-tackled by USC. Tony Colorado, Matt Cork. Nice job by USC's front three on that play. It's been a long time since the Trojans held Baylor to no gain. As I look back at my play-by-play, -play, I think that's the first time in this game Baylor has run the ball that well. Baylor just consuming the clock. Carlson drops back to throw, and it's incomplete intended for Broderick Sargent at the USC 20-yard line. He just couldn't hold on. Carlson threw the ball a little low, but Sargent should have caught the pass. You'll see Carlson under some pressure here. That's 27, Garrett Breland. The ball is low and wobbly a little bit, but Sargent could have caught it. So Terry Seiler will attempt a field goal. Terry Seiler will attempt a field goal. He's kicked just one this year of 37 yards. This will be a 39-yard attempt. It's good. The 
39-yard field goal is good by Terry Seiler. He's just a freshman. He is the smallest man on the team, 5'6", 140 pounds, but that kick puts Baylor out in front of USC 10-7 with four minutes and 54 seconds left in the first half. We'll have more exciting football for you right after this. So the Baylor Bears battling USC tough. Of course, USC rated the third best team in the nation. And Baylor, of course, the underdog in this one. But right now, they have a three-point lead over USC, 10-7, with just under five minutes left here in the first half. And the team that threw so well in its first two games is running well against a USC defense that usually is very tough against the run. There's the scoring drive, 13 plays, 59 yards, six minutes. And then Seiler booted the 39-yard field goal. And the first seven, Baylor. The first drive was over six minutes. Baylor has had the ball most of this first half. Jim Mueller will kick off for Baylor. Webster and Tanner again deep. Webster fumbles the ball. Tanner picks it up. Tanner tackled at his own 10-yard line. Well, the Trojans are in very poor field position, but it could have been a lot worse. As you saw, Webster dropped that pass, and it bounced luckily, I guess you might say, to Randy Tanner, but he was also very alert in picking it up. Here's Webster, number 25. The ball right through his hands like an outfielder dropping a fly ball and right to Randy Tanner. John Salisbury brings him out. Spot the ball at the 12. First and 10. USC at their own 12-yard line. The pitch goes to Ryan Knight in there at tailback. And he crosses the 15-yard line for USC. Brought down by Terry Crouch. This broadcast is presented to you by Laura Mar Sports. Any duplication or use of this broadcast without the express permission of Laura Mar Sports is prohibited. Second down and seven, USC from their own 15-yard line. Long count by Salisbury. Knight again, the ball carrier, and he's across the 20-yard line up to the 21-yard line. Close to a first down, Thomas Everett in from his free safety position to make the tackle on Ryan Knight. Ryan Knight was USC's leading rusher in the first game against Illinois with 89 yards. You see him get a good block from 66, David Cadigan, as he gets across the 20-yard line. Third down and one. Norman wide to the right. Pola and Knight, the remaining backs. Green in motion. Knight again, and he's got the first down. He's up to the 25-yard line. First and 10, USC. Kevin Marsh in on the stop for Baylor. Marsh, a junior out of San Antonio. He plays left end and does a good job for Grant Tapp. Against Illinois in the fourth quarter when USC was trying to run out the clock, Knight carried on six straight plays and made two critical first downs, and we've just seen him carry on three straight plays here in the second quarter. Salisbury to throw. Over the middle, it is complete tonight. A penalty flag goes down. And Knight is brought down at the 35-yard line. Ron Francis and Thomas Everett in on the stop. But we've got a penalty flag down. Holding on USC. So that nullifies the gain by USC on that play. So that'll take the ball all the way, all the way back to the USC 15-yard line. And it will now be first down and 20 yards to go for a first down. Penalty yards, USC, three penalties for 20 yards. Baylor penalized once for five. Clock running. A little over three minutes left, first half. It's 10-7, Baylor leading USC. Ryan Knight, the lone remaining back. Salisbury to throw. And he throws it complete at the 32-yard line to Hank Norman. Thomas Everett made the stop. And Norman 
Gives a high sign to his quarterback, Sean Salisbury. Pass thrown with a lot of velocity, but thrown low. But Norman, who's got the best hands on the team, makes a nice catch. Bends over. Yeah, there he goes. 18, make it 17 yards. Salisbury, 7 of 10 so far for 89 yards. Second and three. Salisbury again to Norman. And that is a first down at the USC 41-yard line. Robert Waters was in on the play. You know, Norman came into the season with a good shot at Jeff Simmons' school career catching record, and he told me before the season started that every time Sean sees him on campus, he says, Hank, I'm going to get you that record. Sean is sure trying here tonight, isn't he, Jeff? Certainly is. First and 10, USC on their own 41-yard line. Two minutes and 25 seconds left in the first half. Salisbury stays to the air, rolling right. He throws it incomplete, intended for Randy Tanner at about the 45-yard line. Thomas Everett was covering on the play for Baylor. Everett is everywhere in that Baylor secondary. And you'll see five Baylor white shirts around Randy Tanner. He looks like he's open for a second. There's Everett. Tip, there's Everett but it was tipped by another bear just before that. Beautiful scoreboard here at the Memorial Coliseum. We thank you. Second down and 10 from the 41 for the Trojans. They trail by three. 10-7 our score. Moves up in the pocket to Salisbury. Complete to Paul Green, right through his fingertips at about the 43-yard line of Baylor. And Green, mad at himself, thought he should have had it. And he should have had it. Sean Salisbury did a great job. He was under a lot of pressure in the backfield. He stepped up to avoid the rush, got the pass off to Green, who had worked his way open. Good pass. Green just dropped it. 8 of 13 for Salisbury. Good for 98 yards and a touchdown. Third and 10, big play for USC. Salisbury, good protection, complete to Tanner. And he's up to the 40-yard line of Baylor, brought down by Thomas Everett and Jack Bird. Bird, the strong safety, six feet tall, 195-pound senior. So Randy Tanner got open and Salisbury Hit him with a bullet. Sean throwing the ball very, very well tonight. You'll see him drill this pass. Perfect spiral. Tanner wide open. 19 yards and another first down. Less than two minutes until halftime, and Randy Tanner shaking up just a bit on that last play. First and 10 at the 40 of Baylor. Play action. Salisbury rolling right. Fires, and it was batted away. Intended for Gene Arrington, and I believe that Hurd or Francis got a piece of the football. I think number number 16, Jack Hurd, you'll see him go for the interception here. Doesn't get the interception, but knocks it away from Arrington. So that brings up a second and 10 from the Baylor 40-yard line for USC. Watching the clock, there's a minute 42 left in the second quarter. Gene Errington wide right. And we've got penalty flags all over the place. See if it's against USC or Baylor. Number 93, Eugene Hall of Baylor was offside, but they're going to call the illegal procedure on the Trojans for drawing him offside. Who moves? Well, Halleck and Cadigan on the right side. Ah, the magic of instant replay. They sure did move. 45-yard line for USC on the last penalty. Second and 15. Salisbury stays in the air, getting rushed. He's going to run with the football. Picks up good yardage, and he dives out of bounds at the 30-yard line of Baylor and gets a warm response from the Coliseum faithful. 
Now, a lot of people will be shocked by that play because Sean Salisbury in his career has not been known for running. He scrambles for 15 yards on this play, as you see him run up the middle into the left and down to the sideline. But he has lost 26 pounds. He lost 26 pounds since last season. Last spring ran the fastest 40 of his career, and he's in the best shape of his career, and he just got a big first down. The SC and their fans with something to yell about. They're down by three, 10-7, with a minute 33 remaining until halftime. First and 10 at the Baylor 30. A quick look at It's complete to Paul Green at the 24-yard line of Baylor. Nice catch by Green. Renee Thompson and Thomas Everett covering in that Baylor secondary. Paul Green can line up at either tight end or at H-back for the Trojans, and he made a nice catch. So we have timeout on the field with a minute and 25 seconds remaining first half with our score, Baylor 10, USC 7. Don't go on or off. We'll be right back. So USC with the football and plenty of time to put some points on the board and they would like six of course. One minute and 25 seconds remaining. Ted Tolner will review today's game by the way show highlights and answer questions at his weekly Monday morning quarterback meeting this Monday. It all starts at noon on campus at Town and Gown. That's Ted Tolner reviewing the USC Baylor game this Monday at noon at Town and Gown on campus. There's Ted. Of course, last week, SC had a bye, but there was some activity. As most of you know, there was a joint investigation by the Pac-10 and the university, and special teams coach Russ Purnell lost his job over it, and they hope that no more penalties will be assessed. There's a passing yards for both teams, and Salisbury again to throw. He's being rushed, trying to get away, and he is manhandled and brought down for a loss. So Baylor able to sack Sean Salisbury, Steve Grumbine led the way. Derek Turner also in on the stop. Actually, I think, uh, Jeff, it was Derek Turner, number 81, who actually got Sean first by the jersey. There he is and twists him around. He won't let go of Sean's jersey, and he won't tear for Sean, and he's going to be thrown for a big loss. Third and 17, and it's complete to Norman. He's out of bounds at the 23-yard line of Baylor. Robert Waters was over there. For Baylor. That stops the clock with 50 seconds remaining, and it brings up fourth down. And it also brings in the field goal kicker, Don Schaefer. Schaefer, who had a 46 and 23 yard field goals against Illinois. And this is a 40 yard attempt. And it's no good. So Schaefer, not successful. And so USC turns the ball over. And the score remains Baylor 10, USC 7. And four seconds flicked off the clock, 46 remaining until halftime. And Baylor with that three-point advantage. And they have dominated early in this ball game, Jim, and I would imagine a lot of people very surprised at that. How about you? Well, I am particularly the way they've dominated by running the ball. Uh, we know they're a fine passing team, but they have run the ball and they have kept the Trojan offense off the field by doing it. Cody Carson, the quarterback, gives it to Derek McAdoo trying to get outside, and he picks up pretty good yardage up near the 27-yard line. Matt Johnson, along with Marcus Cotton, in on the stop. For USC. That Trojan drive, by the way, which ended in the missed 40-yard field goal by Don Schaefer was a 65-yard drive sustained mainly by Sean Salisbury's passing, but it counts for nothing. We give you the clock now in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, less than 20 seconds. Carlson keeps the football, crosses the 30-yard line up to the 33, where he's brought down by Garrett Breland. And there is the gun ending the first half of this game here at the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. And it is somewhat of a surprise as we look at the scoreboard as the Baylor Bears head for the locker room with a 10-7 advantage over USC. We'll be back with more right after this.
Here at halftime, the Baylor Bears with a surprising 10-7 lead over the University of Southern California. Well, the fans here at the Coliseum were treated to a fantastic fireworks show. However, not too many fireworks for the Trojans in the first half. There have been a lot of surprising things in this game, Jeff, and you see on your screen the statistics. Yards rushing, Baylor 119 to only 56 for the Trojans. You might think it would be reversed. But Baylor, the team that had passed for much more than it had gained on the ground in the first two games, had only 25 yards passing to 134 for USC. Trojans led in overall yards, although they trail on the scoreboard. First downs are even. Time of possession, Baylor with a slight edge. Although the Bears had two long drives for their touchdown and their field goal that ate up a lot of time on the clock. So here at halftime, Baylor 10, USC 7. And we'll have the second half kickoff right after this. Back here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jim Perry. Baylor with a 10-7 lead over USC. And Baylor will have the football to open up the second half. A few quick individual statistics. Leading rusher for Baylor, Derek McAdoo, 30 yards on eight carries. Both Tom Mickey and Cody Carlson have com attempted three passes. Mickey completed one, Carlson two for Baylor. Sean Salisbury, 11 of 17 for the Trojans for 134 yards, and that's more attempts than he had in the entire Illinois game. So you see that the Trojans feel like they're in a little bit of trouble. The, US, the leading rusher for USC is Fred Crusher with 31 yards on 11 carries. McAdoo and Rutledge, the deep men for Baylor, and Don Shaver, and set to kick off for USC. return and it's first and ten Baylor Matt Johnson made the tackle for USC and the challenge for the Trojan defense now can they slow down that Baylor option attack which befuddled them the last two times that Baylor had the ball in the first half leading to a field goal and a touchdown Tom Mickey number 10 will start at quarterback for Baylor Leland Douglas is wide to the right <laughs> at the line of scrimmage. And that was Robert Williams, the right halfback, Tony Colorado, put the hold on him and put him to the Coliseum floor. Robert Williams out of Galveston, 5'11", 189-pound senior. Again, it's McAdoo and Williams in the backfield. Prior to this game, Baylor had not gone to the tight end very often. He had completed just one pass, and Forns had caught it. He's the first team tight end. He catches this one for a first down over the middle, and he was open. That's Serpa, number 36, and McDonald, 6, and Keith Davis, 60, bringing him down. before he is brought down by a trio of SC players, Mike Serpa, Tony Colorado, and Matt Court, all in on the stop for USC. This Trojan defense, we remind you, playing without two starters, leading tackler Sam Ano at inside linebacker and outside linebacker Greg Poet. Both have injuries. Ano got hurt in practice and had to have thumb surgery after tearing ligaments in his thumb. Pruitt the flanker, wide to the left. Matt Clark, wide to the right. On the option, the pitch goes to Williams. He gets away from the SC rush. Not for long, he is tackled back at the 29-yard line. Matt Johnson and Marcus caught, caught up with him, and down he went. And the SC fans certainly enjoyed that play. 
Watch it again, the fake inside by Mickey, the pitch to Williams, and Williams is turned back inside by Lou Brock, number 38. He's chased by Matt Court. You'll see Matt Johnson clobber him for a loss. Loss of six, third and 13 from the 30. Mickey to throw. Over the middle, it is complete to Robert Williams. He's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Tim McDonald in on the tackle. He'll be short of the first down, however, Jeff. So that brings up a fourth and punting situation for Baylor. Mickey to Williams and the man making a nice tackle, Tim McDonald, a preseason All-American safety to keep Williams from getting a first down. Sawyer just does get the punt away. Washington calling for a fair catch and makes it at his own 14-yard line. 12-39 left in the third quarter with the score. The Baylor Bears 10, the USC Trojans 7. More after this. Well, USC didn't have the football long. Their drive was stalled, and once again, the penalty bugaboo hit them. They were called for holding, and they were forced to punt the football back to the Baylor Bears. Chris Spurl will be punting from his own end zone, and Baylor will not put on too much of a rush. Everett lets it bounce, picks it up in his own 45. He fumbles the football, and USC recovers. So USC forces a turnover, and they've got the football, and the crowd comes alive. Number 17 running off your field there, Paul Green, a tight end, recovered that fumble. Thomas Everett, usually very sure-handed. He's an outstanding safety. We've seen him break up several passes. He also ran a punt back 75 yards for a touchdown against Wyoming earlier. The ball takes a bounce, a high bounce, and it bounces over his helmet, and then he's lost it. Stephen Keith, Bill Prindle all going for it. It's Green who comes up for it. So Paul Green makes a recovery, and it's first and 10, USC at the Baylor 40-yard line. It's 10-7, Baylor leading here in the third quarter with a little over 11 minutes remaining. Green in motion, far side. On the bootleg, Salisbury, plenty of time, and he throws it over the middle, and it is incomplete to Fred Fletcher, hit very hard. He could not hold on to the football. Covering on the play, the strong side linebacker, Ray Berry. Just like Francis hit Norman, Barry really hits Crutcher on this play to break up the pass from Salisbury over the middle. Wham. Second down, 10 yards to go. Number 43, that's Aaron Grant, who's calling the defensive singles for the Bears. Second and 10 from the 40-yard line. They're having some fun here at the Coliseum. Beautiful night for football. Crutcher. Good yardage. He's inside the 30-yard line. Down to the Baylor 28, Ron Francis made the tackle. You know, tonight's game is the first time since the Illinois game that Fred Crutcher has been hit. His shoulder is so painful that, of course, USC wouldn't let him try that in practice, be tackled. He makes 12 yards and a first down. So the SC faithful making some noise. It's 10-7 Baylor. However, USC is on the move at the 27-yard line. First and 10 in Baylor territory. Green again in motion. Fullback Pola. Good yardage up the middle. He's inside the 20-yard line. Down to the 18. Ray Berry made the stop. He got some help from Anthony Coleman. Sometimes in a, when you're facing a team with a tailback-oriented offense like USC, you concentrate on the tailback so much you forget about the fullback. And there's Ted Toner on the sideline. And that fullback, Kennedy Pola, just got nine, Jeff, and the Trojans go from the 19. Ted Toner would like to get his 15th career win tonight. Second down and two. Crutcher. Very, very close to a first down. It will depend on the spot. There was a pretty good hole there, but number 43, Aaron Grant, closed it quickly to hold pressure to about two yards, but two yards was enough for a first down. First and ten for USC. Time is running. Less than ten minutes left, third quarter, 9.45, 44. Randy Tanner into the game for USC, replacing Paul Green. First and 10 at the Baylor 17-yard line. Salisbury, 11 for 19, 134 yards and one touchdown. 
looking to throw Salisbury. He flares it out to Pola. Pola is down at the Baylor nine yard line. Sean Salisbury is so much more poised this year as a fifth year senior. He obviously couldn't see an open receiver downfield. He waited for Kennedy Pola to drift open off to the right, hit him for a nice gain. Watch it again as Sean drops back, looks downfield. Pola, number 37, drifting off to the right. Salisbury waits, waits, finally says, I'll take the short man and we'll get some yards anyway. Second down and two for USC on the nine yard line of Baylor. Fletcher, and he has plenty and more for the USC first down. Boy, James Fitzpatrick, the Trojans' weak side tackle, put Derek Turner on his back on that play. Turner, the all Southwest Conference end for Baylor. Derek Turner, Robert Waters in for the stop. Well, they spot the ball a little farther back. So now they're going to bring the chains out to see if indeed USC has enough for the first down. First down, USC. This drive began on the Baylor 40 when the usually sure-handed Thomas Everett could not handle Chris Spurl's punt. The ball was recovered by Paul Green of the Trojans. USC now first and goal, as you said, Jeff, on the seven. 10-7 Baylor, but SC now trying to take the lead with 8.27 remaining third quarter. Cormier in motion. Hand off to Crutcher. And he doesn't get much yardage. Ron Francis comes up and makes a nice play from the left cornerback spot. Ray Berry helped out on that last tackle. So no gain on the play. It will be second and goal from the Baylor seven. For USC's sake, it might have been better if they would have not made the first down, Jeff. On and got, gotten the first down perhaps inside the seven because now they've got a, not much room to operate in. Crutcher, the lone remaining back. Tanner in motion. Norman wide left and rolling left to Salisbury. Looking in the end zone. And it is intercepted by Ray Berry. Berry, a nice return up to the 24-yard line. Well, Ray Berry had himself a fine game against Georgia last week when Baylor lost only 17-14. to 14. He had an interception and a fumble recovery last week. A big interception there. Kills the Trojan drive. So Barry with the interception and Baylor has the football. And timeout on the field, 7.32 remaining third quarter with the score, Baylor 10, USC 7. So Baylor with the football, first and 10 on their 25-yard line. Darnell Chase, number five into the ball game in motion. Mickey pitches to Derek McAdoo, and he picks up a couple of yards. Here's that interception a moment ago by Ray Berry. He ran it back 25 yards as Shawsbury rolls left. This is Sean's first interception of the year. The pass was intended for Randy Tanner, the flanker. Berry cut in front of him at the last moment. Gets back to his own 25. Salisbury upset, of course, as he talks to one of the coaches upstairs. Second down and eight from the 27-yard line for Baylor University. Morris H in motion. Derek McAdoo has the football, and he doesn't get much yardage as Mike Serpa knocked him down. Tony Colorado also in on that stop for USC. Serpa is the young redshirt freshman who has the unenviable task of replacing Sam Ono, the leading tackler on this Trojan team. He made a nice play there. Junior Thurman, who had a couple of interceptions two weeks ago against Illinois, is into the ball game defensively for USC. USC going with six defensive backs on this play. Third down and five, and the pass is complete to Robert Waters. Make that Robert Williams. Robert Williams at the 42-yard line. You'll see Tom Mickey working against six defensive backs, still find the open man Robert Williams on the right side, and he makes a first down. First and 10 Baylor at their own 42-yard line. Clock is running, just a little over six minutes remaining, third quarter. Tom 
Tom Mickey running the show for Baylor. And he pitches to Williams again. And he gets up to the 48-yard line. Brought down by Matt Johnson. So Ted Tolner certainly not satisfied with the way his Trojans have performed thus far. But there's a lot of time left in this one. Second and four at the 48-yard line. Glenn Pruitt in motion. Mickey hands off to the first man through, and that's Robert Williams, and he's got great yardage as he's pushed out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Cornerback Matt Johnson was lined up on the line on that play, and he had a shot at Williams in the backfield. We might be able to see it on the screen. He'll overrun. There he is, number eight. Williams cuts inside and goes 30 yards down the sideline. Carrying the ball a little recklessly there, Jeff, isn't he? Yeah, like a loaf of bread. Here he is again. See him holding that ball out? But he cut inside number eight, Matt Johnson. First and Big 10 run. at the 22-yard line of USC is Baylor threatening again, and they lead it 10-7. Roderick Sargent, number 30, in motion. Dropping straight back to pass. Mickey, and he throws it complete to Derek McAdoo, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. But now they're saying no, no touchdown. We have a disagreement, and the officials now are having a conference. Let's it, wait and see. It really was hard to see who actually came up with that ball because Jerome Tyler had his hands on it too, it looked like. So they signaled touchdown, and then all of a sudden, no. Let's see which way it goes. Okay, you fans at home, you decide. That's Derek McAdoo. It looks like he's got the ball. Now he's got his back to you. And they Derek. rule it a touchdown. A 22-yard touchdown. Mickey to Derek McAdoo. Here's another look from a different angle. The reverse angle. The ball was slipping out as he came down in the end zone. That might not be a touchdown. They called it a touchdown, but the ball was slipping out before he hit the ground, and when he hit the ground, it popped out. The Trojans pounced on it. They rule it a touchdown. It's now 16-7, to seven, and Terry Seiler in for the PAT. And it's not holding. It's up. And it's good. So with timeout here at the Coliseum, five minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter with the score. Baylor now out in front of USC, 17 to seven. We'll have more college football in just a moment. We are back. Baylor with a big lead now. From a reverse angle, take another look at that controversial play where they rule McAdoo scores a touchdown, but there the ball is, and he does not have possession of it as Tyler makes the tackle. Late in the third quarter, USC on the move. They had a drive that started on their own 20-yard line with Sean Salisbury doing some passing. Ryan Knight uh, handling most of the rushing chores. They moved the ball inside Baylor territory as the gun sounded, ending the third quarter of action here at the Coliseum. So the score at the end of three periods, the Baylor Bears leading USC 17-7. to We'll have more after this. USC is on the move. They've got the football at the Baylor 20-yard line. Second down and five. Kennedy Pola and Ryan Knight, the two remaining backs. Behind Salisbury, green in motion to the near side. Pola gets the call. He battles his way for a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and that's about it. The statistical story of the third quarter went like this. 157 yards rushing for Baylor, 120 for USC. And, of course, this is through three quarters, 173 yards passing for SC, 84 for Baylor. First downs, three more for SC. Trojans leading everything but the score, Jeff. And we have another 
important third down play for SC, third and four. Salisbury scrambling again. Now he throws for the end zone, and it's a touchdown. And you just Randy saw it. Tanner makes the catch. Touchdown USC, and they're high-fiving here at the Coliseum. And that was a great play by Randy Tanner. He went high in the air, came down near the end line, but he got one foot down in bounds, which is all you need in college football for a touchdown. You watch the great scramble by Salisbury. Watch Tanner get one foot down there and then fall out of bounds. A great effort by both Sean Salisbury, who scrambled and then saw Tanner, and then a a great show of athletic ability by Tanner. He had the confidence and the concentration to make sure he got one leg in bounds, and he did it. 19 yards and a touchdown. And Schaefer has his point after touchdown attempt blocked by Baylor. No good. I think number 81, Derek Turner, the All Southwest Conference defensive end, was the man who got it. So timeout on the field. 14 minutes and 11 seconds left in this one. And USC back in the hunt now. The score, Baylor 17 and the Trojans 13. SC scoring drive took 14 plays, 7 minutes, 80 yards, and then the touchdown pass thrown by Salisbury to Tanner, and then the point after was blocked that might become very important later on because they're now four points away, so a field goal does not get you a tie. So we'll just have to wait and see how important that blocked PAT becomes. Sean Salisbury's ability to scramble kept that Trojan drive alive. Key 14-yard run on third down, and then he scrambled for the touchdown. Derek McAtoo will run it out. He was about three yards deep in his end zone, and he's got some room, and he breaks it loose. He's across the 30. He's up to the 34-yard line. Fine run by Derek McAdoo. First look, looked like he'd made a mistake. He hesitated, and the whole line about he who hesitates is lost is pretty true when you're trying to run out of your own end zone. Gary Klein, the man who finally brought him down for USC. 34 yards on the kickoff return. Outstanding run by McAdoo. He'll get a breather. He deserves it. Cody Carlson in at quarterback for Baylor. Leland Douglas wide to the right side. And a handoff goes to Broderick Sargent, and he's up to the 39-yard line. Brought down by Mike Serpa. Now, of course, the Trojan defense, which has yielded two touchdowns and a field goal and allowed Baylor to control the ball quite a bit tonight, has got to get tougher. USC is going to have a chance to win this game. Baylor has run very, very well. Just the start of the fourth quarter, 13 minutes and 37 seconds remain. It's 17-13 in favor of Baylor. Carlson on the option, keeps it, and he crosses midfield. He's down to the 47-yard line. A fine run by Cody Carlson. An excellent faking by the Baylor quarterback. Uh, Eric, a lot of the Trojans thought that Broderick Sargent, number 30, had the ball. There he goes, inside. Sargent carried out the fake very well, too, but Carlson kept it for 14 yards. 14-yard gain. Matt Johnson made the tackle for USC, so it's a first and 10 for Baylor. Ball spotted at the USC 47-yard line. Sargent gets it that time and picks up a yard a little bit more. Matt Court made the stop with help from Mike Serpa. Number five, Darnell Chase into the ball game, replacing Ben Baker of Baylor. Chase, Clark, wide to the right, two remaining backs behind Cody Carlson. Chase comes in motion now. Handoff goes to the first man through. Jackie Ball had the football. And he was brought down by Keith Davis, Marcus Cotton, and Mike Serpa. That'll bring up a third down for Baylor. So this is where SC's defense really has to get stingy. Now the Trojans are expecting a Baylor pass here, and they brought in two extra defensive backs. They've got six extra defen six defensive backs on the field right now. A little over 12 minutes left in the football game. It's 17-13 Baylor. The crowd trying to motivate SC's defense. Carlson 
scrambling. Now he's going to run the football, and he is tripped up inside the 35-yard line, so he's got easy first down yardage for Baylor. Keith Davis made the stop for USC. The Baylor offensive line does a good job of protecting Carlson, but he sees downfield that all his receivers are covered. He's got a lot of room to run, so why not take it? There's a first down. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line of USC. It's first and 10 for Baylor. Carlson, 35 yards on four carries. He's going to throw. Got time. And it's intercepted by Jerome Tyler. Tyler fumbles the football. Let's see who recovers it. It'll be on stack. Tyler intercepted, but then he fumbled the football. USC's got it. We don't know who's got it for the Trojans, but it's Trojans ball. SC, the players surrounding the pile, they're pointing that they've got the football. Here you see the play again. Carlson throwing down the middle. Tyler with a nice leaping interception. The ball will just sort of seem to slip out of his hands. No, it's stripped. Stripped very nicely by Barnell Chase. They are saying that Baylor recovered the football. Larry Thompson, the referee. Baylor recovered the football, not USC. Well, the officials first signaled USC. We'll watch it again as you see Tyler make the interception. Coming from behind is number five, Darnell Chase, a wide receiver who strips the ball. Good play by Chase. Tyler goes for it. Looks like maybe 58 Kyle Lane of Baylor, perhaps an offensive guard got the ball. Kyle Lane, the man who recovered. Jackie Ball picks up a little bit of yardage to the 20 yard line. He is brought down by Tony Colorado and Matt Court. That's credit again, Darnell Chase stripping that ball from Jerome Tyler who made the interception and Baylor winds up with the ball in better field position. No gain on that last play, so it will be second down and 10 from the USC 22 yard line. Carlson pitches to Jackie Ball. And he is finally wrestled to the Coliseum turf by Jerome Tyler. Tyler, the 6'1", 185-pound senior out of Riverside. He's got some speed, runs a 40 and 4'6". You see Matt Johnson and Jerome Tyler knocking down Jackie Ball. And then it looked like Tyler took the ball away from him. But he was down. Ball getting some assistance on the sidelines. Clock is running. Just a little over 10 minutes remaining in this one. Baylor leading USC 17 to 13. And now Baylor wants a timeout and they get it. So timeout is called 10 minutes and six seconds left in this football game. With the score, Baylor University 17, USC 13. We'll have more from the Coliseum here in Los Angeles right after this. Grant Taft talking things over with quarterback Cody Carlson. I want to remind you that this program has been recorded and edited for broadcast at this time. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jim Perry. We're glad you're aboard. Pretty good football game. Baylor 17, USC 3 and rushing yards. Very interesting. You would think it would be the other way around. Big third down play. Looks like first down yardage for Baylor. Jackie Ball, the ball carrier, and he did a super job. And he got the first down for Baylor I at the 11-yard line of USC. I repeat a statistic I gave quite a while ago that Baylor came into this game in two games having thrown for more than twice as many yards as they had rushed for. Tonight they have rushed for many more yards than they've passed for, and they have befuddled the Trojan defense a little bit. Kept the ball a long, long time and produced 17 points. They've still got the lead. They're going for more. Matt Clark wide to the right. Morris eights in motion to the near sideline. And the pitch goes to Ball trying to get outside, but he is not able to. 
a great play by Matt Johnson who came up and made the tackle. Fine play by Johnson. Johnson is a cornerback who came up very, very quickly. You'll see it here. Pitched a ball and Johnson is in the backfield and he's there about the time the ball gets to ball. An outstanding individual effort by Matt Johnson. The ball is now at the 15 yard line where it will bring up second down and 14. Carlson confused about something and he wants another timeout so he can go to the sideline and talk with head coach Grant Taft. And it is amazing that Grant Taft, who's been at Baylor for this his 14th year, this is the first time that he has played a Pac-10 school. Right you are, Jeff. Uh, it is surprising. Uh, speaking of the Southwest Conference and the Pac-10, uh, interesting statistic about USC versus the Southwest, Southwest Conference. The Trojans have won 13 of their last 14 games against teams from down there, although they're trailing right now. We want to remind you, by the way, that you can, you can join the Trojan Clubs in honoring Jeff Keith at a banquet this Wednesday, September 25th at the Torrance Marriott. Keith became the first amputee to run across the United States when he completed the 3,300-mile trek last February. Proceeds from the 6 p.m. banquet, that's this Wednesday, September 25th, will go to the USC Physically Challenged Athletes Scholarship Fund. For more information on this worthy cause, call area code 213 Seven four three two seven. Excuse me, two two seven one. That's seven four three two two seven one. Baylor has a football on the USC 15-yard line. It is second down and 14. Cody Carlson calling signals. Glenn Pruitt in motion. Carlson rolling right, and he throws, and he was getting great pressure from Tony Colorado. Matt Johnson was covering on the play. Glenn Pruitt was the intended receiver, and that football was nowhere close to being complete. Fine job by USC's defense, putting great pressure on quarterback Carlson. Watch it again. That's Matt Johnson hitting him, forcing him to release early, and the ball just bounces harmlessly on the grass. That'll bring up third and 14 from the 15-yard line, and you see the third down conversion story. Carlson drops straight back to pass, and he's throwing for the corner, but he overshoots. Horace Ace, the intended receiver. So the crowd giving USC's defense a round of applause as they did a great job keeping. Free signal that was Southern Cal's ball, but when they dug to the bottom of the pile, there was Kyle Lane with the football. So it was the Baylor Bears. Instead of losing the football, we get three points. Kick the field goal, Terry Siler does. It's 20 now to 13. That seven points is extremely important. The blocked field goal by Derek Turner allowed us to go seven points ahead. And there's some fine defense. That's a big first down for them. Now, this is their last drive, and this is important to watch. You can't find finer defense than this against a great football team. Ron Francis... Uh, or rather, that was Johnny Thomas knocking him out of bounds. Excellent tackle, Johnny. Watch the defensive line, the charge crutcher. This is her bread and butter. Down inside the five-yard line to the three-yard line. Good defense. Third down and goal from the three-yard line. Watch this. This is an extremely important play. The quarterback is going to hand off the crutcher. He's hit there by Ray Berry and stopped. His forward momentum is stopped by Thomas Everett. Fourth down and goal from the three-yard line. Watch it. This is for the ball game. They'd have to go for two points if they scored, but they're not about to score. Aaron Grant, Thomas Everett. They had a holding on the play, but of course we refused it. We take over the football, run the clock out, and the game is the Baylor Bears. I've got to give credit to our offensive line. They did a super job. Our defense rose to the occasion when they had to. Baylor's victory, 20 to 13.